Okay, so how is like the track building and the musical part of this work? Like, how did you develop those skills, and how has that, how has that helped you, in you know, besides the fact that you can do a demo every day? Like, how has that helped you creatively? Um. Well, the way I got into it is just by doing it. Like, I wanted to make a record, and I was out of money, so I couldn't hire anybody to make it. So I bought the Pro Tools starter kit like four years ago. Um, I guess five years ago. I don't know, I'm getting old. Yep. Um, but I bought the Pro Tools starter kit and just kind of started doing it and made a record, which ended up being the record I came to Nashville on. And, um, and, but since then, it's really grown into a big part of what I do. And because of the, the changing landscape of country music, like being able to write to a beat or any of those other things really change what you do melodically, especially like rhythmically. Mm -hmm. Like you'll find yourself writing a different melody than you would if you were just sitting on guitar. And, um, and, and that's such a big part of where the sound is right now too. Like, and it won't always be, but I mean it certainly is right now. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to do it. And then, um, and for me being able to turn in that, you know, close to a record every day mm -hmm. when I'm done writing and mm -hmm. then we'll send, I mean, you know, we pitch everything the day we write it. Mm -hmm. And that just makes a huge difference too. Right. Because um, it has that feeling of just like so hot off the presses. Yeah. Right. Well, and that and makes you everybody kind of excited. Capture, capture the energy that you're feeling in the room. Like, I love, I love just making it right then. And it's funny, <coughs> I've, a lot of songs, like they'll steal part, not steal, but they'll take my tracks from the demos and it'll be on the record. Like, sure be cool if you oh, did yeah. for Blake Shelton the, until the first chorus, it's all my demo. Mm -hmm. I just gave him the track. Same mm -hmm. thing on Goes Like This for mm -hmm. Tom Stratt. Like, Do they credit you as a producer? Um, they probably credit me as programmer, because mm -hmm. um, they're ne never good. <laughs> I mean, no, right, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just a fight that you don't want to have. You know? No, right, no. You just want to say, whatever you need to do, just cut it. Mm -hmm. Put it out. Mm -hmm. Do they pay you? Um, when they're ready to use programmer? Yeah, I've got, well, not for programming, but they pay you. I've done some co-production with some mm -hmm. people and, and produce some records and stuff too and they pay for that. But right, I just wondered if they use They'll pay you for if programming. If they use half your demo on their record. Well, but if you're a writer on it, they can't pay you. They can't? It has to do with the unions. They can't pay you if you're a writer. Mm. But they do, If like I've done some programming stuff on records that I didn't write and mm -hmm. they pay you for that. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. I just wondered how that went. Yeah, no, they don't pay you. Mm -hmm. It's great when, when you're, what you created has that much influence on the final outcome. Does it, yeah. Does that feel amazing to hear your tracks like with Blake Shelton on them? Yeah, I mean that, that part's really, really cool. Especially because this was, all those records that I was talking about, that was back when I was still, I was living in somebody's attic. Mm -hmm. And I actually made those records in an attic. <laughs> like, so it's, I mean that side of it's cool. What was the attic like? <laughs> it was small. <laughs> yeah, it was little. And I wrote a lot of those songs over there too and we had, mm -hmm and air conditioning that you had to turn off when we were cutting vocals. Oh yeah, that's the worst. Because it was just a window unit. Mm -hmm. yeah, Pretty classy stuff, you know? <laughs> and then everybody's sweating. Oh yeah, no, it was yeah, horrible. Miserable. In right. the summers, like it was ridiculous. Yeah. But, but you have a nice studio now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So last time you were here, you said something that really helped me about programming. And like this made a lasting impact on me. And that was, you said, when you were building beats, you weren't trying to be like a live drummer. Yeah. You know? And that was so helpful to me. Like, it took so much pressure off of the stuff that I was trying to do. I'm like, oh, I don't have to make it sound like a live drummer. I don't have to do what a live drummer would naturally do. I could do what I think sounds cool. Yeah. When I actually think, I mean, I think you're better off. Like, if you go too far with a record or with a demo and it's too recordy, like, a, sometimes that turns producers off. Mm. because they want to be able to hear what they're going to do to it. Mm -hmm. And um, I usually, I go for weird over pristine, like, every time. Good, that's so cool. That's yeah. also amazing. Yeah, and it makes, weird it makes stuff pristine. stand out. Yes. When imagine, like, pitch meetings are, like, all day mm -hmm. cattle calls. Mm -hmm. Especially if the artist is involved, that artist is going to hear about 150 songs mm -hmm. that day. Right. So, I mean... They're probably all pretty good. Like for right. the most part, people, this town writes good songs. Like they're all good. Right. The so. trick to getting a cut is not necessarily to write the best song. It's you should always try to, but like you want to also be thinking about what's going to make it stand out. Mm -hmm. And like every opportunity to get a hook in there, like I I generally try to have like 
some sort of musical hook to start mm -hmm. songs, mm -hmm. just so you catch them really quickly. Mm -hmm. And like every every hit that I've had has had a musical hook. Mm -hmm. Right off the bat. Yeah, mm -hmm. like you know that it's that song when it mm -hmm. starts. Yes, exactly. And then that, I, this is something we talk about in the college classes too eventually, we haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> but, um, but like if you can write a musical hook, that that where somebody can hear within two or three notes, they can know exactly what song it is. That's amazing. Yeah. That can be life changing. That could take a song around the world if everybody yeah. can know. Like the instant you hear it, you're like, oh, that's that song. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Well, and it's I mean anything that can make something pop out like that. Like just coming from this beach and party. That song actually starts with a beer can opening. Mm -hmm. And but like that's the first thing you hear, and I always know that it's that song when it comes on. Mm -hmm. But it, I played the beer can on the record. Did you? It was a course light. Did you sample it? it came, well, it came from the demo. <laughs> yeah, because we were drinking beer and writing a song. Like, writing songs is such a hard job. <laughs>